Uh, Miss Angel and I, during the COVID, we sat in my uh, office or we were at the house one time and we did something together. And so uh, we thought we'd do something tonight uh, to give you 10 things that we have learned in 25 years. Uh, so uh, we probably could have done it in three, but I think we came up with 10 things that we learned in 25 years. So I want her to come on up here and uh, we're just going to just, just share a little bit as a family here. How's that? And, uh, and some things. And so uh, we want to, uh, to share. And, you know, the truth is uh, we all have challenges. I've done a lot of marriage counseling, premarital counseling, postmarital counseling. And, uh, and I, 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 I don't say this because we're perfect, but when I traveled before I came to pastor, Angel would always ask me, what kind of relationship did the pastor and the wife have? That was always her. She always asked me, I don't know if there any new place I went to preach that she didn't ask me, how was the pastor and his wife? She always asked that question. And because it's important to us that that's what, that's what it's about. And, uh, you know, Regardless if it's five years, 10 years, 25 years, 55 years, 65 years, into your 70 years, uh, the truth is, I've, of, I've often said, and I've told people set in my office, uh, if everyone learned to enjoy each other as much as Angel and I learned to enjoy each other, uh, you'd live together forever. And uh, I really believe that. And uh, it's not that I haven't uh, ticked her off so much that uh, I'm sure she's wanted to... Uh, walk out of the room, but, uh, but she loves me too much. You know, I've done the same back to him. So, uh, anyway, all right, all right. let's, uh, let's look top at our, ten. let's and look at are, a top 10 here. These are ten. not in any particular like order or priority. So just bear with us as we, we go through these. So the first one though, don't go to bed angry. Now we have a poly, we have a rule in our house and that is we do not go to bed angry. You can go to bed. We don't go to bed angry. Madison, now Brittany has her own home with her own kids, uh, but still today in the household, uh, we will make sure, even, I don't get back in here, regardless, we'll make sure that we do not go to bed angry. We do not, we make a decision. We don't leave the house stomping mad. We don't go to bed, we don't go to bed angry. I'm, I don't want to even give the enemy a foothold that something would happen and you can't move forward in life because you have so much, you're carrying so much guilt because of what, because what, what's going on. Ray Bench says, you know, that uh, him and Janine, uh, you know, try to live life where they're not angry, but they do go to bed cheek to cheek sometime. He fakes this wall and he, she faces that wall. So, you know, uh, sometimes you may start off uh, uh, that way, but we have a rule. Let's don't go to bed angry. And uh, if you don't have that, you need to get that in there. Bible said, don't even, let the, don't, even let, don't even let the sun go down on your wrath. Don't even. So these are biblical things. So this is, even though it's a list, we can still minister here. And so whatever you do, keep this heart right. And uh, don't, don't, don't allow yourself to go to sleep angry. Matter of fact, it'll mess with you. You'll, you'll, you'll open the door sometimes for the enemy to mess with your sleep and your dream worlds. If you're always going to bed angry and upset, the enemy will take advantage of that and he'll mess with you. Okay, the next one, communication is vital. All right, go ahead, say something about that. Well, as you also shared earlier, communication isn't always just verbal. Um, how many of you know all the little different emojis, emojis that you can do and you have eye rolling and, you know... Um, these kind of things, and you know, um, you know, here's here's one that we are all guilty of. And as long as everybody's in agreement, it's great. But if everybody's not in agreement in the family, it's not so great. But how many knows? Like if if he was talking to me and I just pick up my phone and start scrolling, is that communicating? I'm communicating to him that I'm not really interested in what he's saying right at the moment. So I should at least be fair enough to say, hold on, I, I need to finish this text or something like that. And vice versa, sometimes um, just without doubt, there'll be times where we pick up the phone to, maybe we're talking about something and we need to uh, figure out something. So we pick up the phone and then when we pick up the phone, we have like three texts. And so then we get focused on accomplishing whatever that text is or response. And then, you know, 15 minutes later, I'm like, what did you ask? What did, what were we supposed to be doing? Um, so it's just 
it's a lot of effort, but communication is really important. And it's not just in speaking, but our tones of voice, um, our attitudes, our actions, our mannerism, mannerisms. You know, we can speak attitude without ever opening our mouth. Amen. And my daughter has mastered eye rolling. So, you know, actually this generation has, right? So um, we can, we just have to really be mindful of our verbals and nonverbals. She's a professional. (laughs) Love ya. (laughs) So anyway, uh, communications, not all, like she said, verbal. How many have heard people say your actions are louder louder than words? And I just did a... uh, a counseling session the other day and we just spent a whole thing on communication and uh, people us in this counseling session people talk about well uh, we don't communicate I said explain to you what you're saying I want to talk more I said well communication is just not talking you remember Gene and June they said they're driving for three hours not saying a word and he says it don't get much better than this does it <laughs> so you know so the truth is, so you don't always have to be talking to communicate love and, and uh, you know, well-being and whatever. But communication is, uh, it's like, why, it's why you have so many emojis. That's why if something serious is going on, I do not like to text because you do not know how to read emotion in a text. I've called people. It, was this a rebuke? I asked one, was this a rebuke or, or what is it? Because you can't read. You can't read heart in text. All right, so... Uh, don't argue with one another over text. Face each other. Face each other. So when we were first um, dating and my background was, um, you know, more of we just don't necessarily deal with situations. And so I remember one particular time there, there was something that we were in disagreement of before we were... We were um, well, we, we were still dating, we right? Yeah, was it, we were dating. Yeah, we were. I, th- I can't remember, but I think we were dating. And I like turned away to like walk away, like I'm just gonna not deal with it. Now, t- in my defense, in my defense, part of it is I think it's good that you don't say things that can be hurtful. So it's better to keep your hold your tongue because. We always talk about words are like toothpaste and you can squeeze the toothpaste. And once that toothpaste is out, have you ever tried to put toothpaste back in the same tube that it came? You can't. And the words are the same thing. So, you know, it's important that you think about what you're saying. But he, we were not, he was not having that. He was like, turn me around and was like, we are going to deal with this. And she went. (laughs) (laughs) It wasn't a pretty sight for a minute. (laughs) But we've made a decision we're not going to do that anymore. (laughs) At least I didn't want to do that anymore. (laughs) So, okay, let's keep on moving here. Um, Keep God and his house and the house of God and the holy things priority in your life. Amen. You know, this is very important. I think it's not that uh, we've allowed Josh and Maddie, Maddie and Brittany. Brittany was in Cheers. She was in uh, Color Guard and... Uh, and you know, Maddie, like I said, cheer, color guard and cheer. And they, uh, Brittany really, uh, the school she was in did well in color, color guard. Josh is in sports, uh, period. <laughs> and so we, we let them have times, but even this year already with the coach, I said, now, you know, our standard. Oh, I, I know ref. Uh, I know your standard. So the point is we, we, we let them do that. Uh, but not at the expense of losing track of where God is and what God has for us. And so the house of God, making it a priority. We established this early in life. I wasn't pastoring. I was traveling. Now, a lot of times, just if people that knew me then knew it. I'd be gone two weeks, sometime home a few days, gone another week. And uh, that's the way it was. And I averaged over this period of time, I was only averaging about eight nights a month home. I had people tell me, I I don't know if I would do that, man. You're going to mess your marriage up. And actually, our marriage never got weak. We never messed it up uh, because we knew how to keep the marriage right even while I was on the road. And we knew how to keep it right when I was home. I think that part helped us more than about anything. But I had preacher friends that traveled. And when they were not preaching, they were never in church. And so we established this, that... There was times I came off the road knowing I'd have to be back on in a few few more 
uh, days in a midweek service. At that time was when the Lord drew us out of here and we were attending Potter's house and they had a Tuesday night service. And uh, we convinced ourselves that uh, we didn't need to go to church. I, I've been, I preached all last week. I preached Sunday, uh, came home. Uh, we didn't need to go to church. And we got there, had it settled. We're not going to church. And our hearts got so convicted that we Guess got up. That's what we did. We went to we church. We got up went to church because to us, where you're tired. Well, you... Uh, we can make excuses for anything. Now, I realize there's actually legit things. I don't, I don't want anybody to feel like we try to condemn people, put them under condemnation for not being there. But, folks, the house of God, the things of God, has become a priority. So we settled this when we got married. The things of God will be a priority in our life. So if you're married 25 years, 50 years, 75 years, don't ever quit allowing the things of God being a priority in your house. Amen? Uh, tell your flesh... You know, suck it up. Yep. Let's go to church. Mm-hmm. Now, you know. And then reward it afterwards with ice cream. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You can always find a way to celebrate. Uh, you can always find a place to celebrate. But you got to make that a priority. And, uh, and we, we have made it a priority. And uh, we, we just enjoy it. I love the house of God. I love God's people. Amen. You know, I've had to learn to love more. You know, took me along with some people. But I love God's people. I love God's people. All okay, right. let's see. We are at number four. Keep humor in your life. Oh. Smile, laugh, laugh at each other. There's times we get to laughing so much at night yeah. before we go to sleep. I mean, belly laugh. Yeah. You, 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 have to, you have to be able to keep fun. You got to learn how to laugh at yourself. He's really funny. But he's funny not just like sometimes when he's preaching, but he's funny just when it's just being him too. And he she makes just me loves laugh. me. <laughs> But anyway, we do. We learn to laugh at one another. We, we enjoy each other. You know, we made a decision. One day our kids are going to be gone. And we don't want to wake up one day and say, we don't know how to live together. Mm-hmm. I, I watch that. Mm-hmm. I, I've had them in my office. People don't know how to live together after that. You got to know how to live together. So have fun. Do something that you enjoy together. Have fun. Yeah, um, this will go down, well, this will go with another one, but it's kind of a funny and it's kind of personal, but like not really that personal, like sort of. But the other day he was making fun of me because, so just like, I like socks and flannels and long shirts to sleep in. I get cold. <laughs> he And he said the other day, what'd you say? There was one time you said, yeah, back when we were first married, you wore a pretty, like, silky gown. And now, now your flannels and socks <laughs> up to your knees. And, and <laughs> but he's Oh, me. my. <laughs> Anyways, so keep humor It didn't change life. anything. She still wore the same. All right, move on. Uh, okay. So learn how to enjoy and continue to like each other. <laughs> I'll give some voice to this. The other day I was having a conversation. Um, actually, it was with my boss. We were just talking about this this summer and some of the uh, plans and vacations and stuff like that. Um, but talking about this different stage phase that we're about to enter into with Josh going off to school and Maddie's pretty much on her own. Obviously, Brittany's been on her own. So we're going to kind of get to that, you know, empty nest. And so, you know, I told him, I said, you know, I think it's going to be okay because I still like him. (laughs) I still like to be around him. So, you know, that's a good thing. But everybody here probably, I mean, maybe not the younger ones is so much connected to that. But some people don't like each other when they get older and they don't have those things in common. And and so it takes effort to continue to um, be able to enjoy each other. So we do like each other. So anyways... So, you know, I told her years, well, we were just first married. I said, here's the deal. If you leave, I'm going with you. Uh-huh. uh-huh. That's just the way it is. We, uh-huh. don't, uh, we don't do this. Amen. Okay. So, right. we're moving right along. You guys doing okay? Yeah. All right. Just checking on you. Um, oh, so, we don't have to give a lot of voice to this one, but it just is keep the fires burning. He probably wants to give more voice than I do. You know how men are. <laughs> Keep the fires burning, man. You, 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 you got it. You, you, 
you got to keep you got to keep love in your marriage. You got to keep love in your marriage. You got to. I don't care how old you are. You you have to be have to be able to do that. Amen. My kids are up here going, "Next, go to the next one." <laughs> Yeah. So I have to tell this story because I just absolutely love it. And I'll try to say it. Yeah, maybe I better. Anyways, about Lisa Bevere. The one, how many of you went through that marriage class with John and Lisa Bevere? You saw that. I thought one of the things that she said, and, and it totally embarrassed her son, but um, Lisa's son and had got, just gotten married and basically made reference to her son to say that... Um, the wedding night will be probably the worst that you'll have. It only gets better from there. She told her son that. She told her son that. So keep so it So the older you get, there. the more you know each other, and the more you love each other, and the more intimate you should have a life. Amen? Now realize that we'll keep it right with kids in here, but family. But the truth is, what keeps marriage for 25 years and above, you've got to know how to be married. <laughs> And you can do it in a holy way because God created it. To it be is that holy way. way. And that's the most important. It is holy way. So before my girls go crawling underneath the pew in They're the front row. They're sitting there, got their head hanging. <laughs> I don't know. And I don't know where Josh is. He's already. Oh, he's already. <laughs> I tried to tell them the stork did not drop you off at the house, but they won't believe it. All right. Okay. Moving on. I can All tell right. that's. Uh, Woo! Heading on here. Woo! All right. So manage the pressure of money. And manage together financial, financial decisions. You know, the pressure of money. Uh, money is one of the top uh, three things in all marriage problems. I've asked people about every counseling, give me the top five you think, if you can think of five. Usually people think of three or, you know, three or four. And uh, uh, usually they always say money first. Actually, the number one in most, in most statistics about marriage problems is not really money. It's religion. It's religion because people are not spiritually compatible. And eventually that's going to wear on you. So if you're not married in here, young adults, do not compromise that. Uh, and no. if you have any question about that, find an adult that may have a testimony that they want to share with you. But Amen? it's true. You, you, you need to stay. So that's, that's number one thing. Uh, it's not that people that hasn't got married that wasn't uh, both of them born again didn't work out. So there, it's not like it's, it doesn't happen. But the truth is, it's, it's in the top one and two, religion. Huh? But this one's money. This one's money. But I was going to say, number two would be children. And number three is money. And so money is in the top three. Some of them have money number two. Sex, number three, and children, number four. But money is never lower than number three that I could ever find. It's the pressures of it. People struggle with the pressures of money. And actually, uh, it divides. There's blame. And the ironic thing is, is even though he's told you about his portfolio when we got married. Poor, poor, poor. Portfolio. portfolio. Yeah, brown paper bag portfolio. Um, interest on the credit cards portfolio. Yeah, it was a mess. Um, but the truth of the matter is, um, he actually is better with it than I am. Like as far as like, he'll hold on to it. Whereas if the kids ask, you know, I'm like, okay. And so I'm a little freer with it than actually he is and spending it and holding on to it. But, and then when it comes to, you know, we tease sometimes like he has his own little slush fund account and we call it honey, don't know money, but how many knows? I can know. <laughs> now she knows my password to my app, so I don't know. I, there's no honey don't it's know for anymore. for your protection that I know uh, For that, my so. protection, yeah. So anyways, that's, I mean, that's a whole, like, deep conversation, and, you know, there's lots of seminars on that, but it's just really important that you're in agreement together and you learn how to pray and believe God together and um, that, you know, you... If, if you got one that's just been thrift and just wants to stop and blow money and the other one's not, you really got to keep that before the Lord to make sure that um, you really evaluate what's important in your spending. So, because. Yeah, pressures will come, but self-inflicted pressures add a greater challenge. You know, you're going to get under pressure. Sometimes things break down 
uh, it's more than your emergency fund can allow. And it, it can put pressure on you. But during all of this, you've got to stay unified. You've got to stay unified in that pressure. So number eight is also a way that we have to stay unified. And, and for um, us with raising kids was um, our discipline, whatever that looked like, that we would stay together. Especially when the kids got old enough to play mom versus dad. So when they started talking, <laughs> pretty much. I mean, it doesn't take very long for them to, mommy won't let me, and run to daddy, and vice versa. You know, dad's so mean. I can't believe he did that. So, you know, it's, it, but then we call each other and laugh because, you know, we know, we know the drill now. We got our eyes on you guys. We know what you do. So, but the important thing is, is that we, we learned that we just had to stay together and not allow what they wanted to do or not do or complain or whatever that looked like that we would stay together in our approach to discipline. Here's one. You always take mom's side. I'm a smart man. (laughs) That's exactly right. No. (laughs) And And the truth of the matter is if we disagreed on like, okay, I don't think anybody here has probably ever done this, but if you've ever just like admittedly we've gotten so aggravated that we're just like, all right, you're grounded. You're not going anywhere for two weeks. And we did it out of aggravation. And maybe, um, maybe he's not really agreeing with me on that, let's say. It's best not to do that in front of the kids. Take it, take it to another room. And we've done that. Yeah. And then we sort it out, and then we either repent, backpedal, you know, give in, whatever, stick to our guns, whatever. But the truth of the matter is he wouldn't, like, say, now, no, you cannot do that. To me, like in front of the kids. Now, granted, if Maddie or Brittany or Josh had the microphone, they may have a few different instances. But in general, we did try to stay together. And Maddie, Brittany, and Josh, none of you are getting the microphone tonight. So I'll put your heart at rest. (laughs) So, but that that part's very very important. And we've done that. Now, we know we did that out of frustration. It's not that we don't need to do something. But maybe we need to back down a couple hundred RPMs here. (laughs) And, uh, and readjust, readjust some things. Uh, but uh, Because the truth of the matter is, there's things that the kids would do. It didn't really hardly phase me. And he'd be like ticked off. And vice versa, there would be some things that I'm just like, I am going to wring their necks. And he's like, chillax. Well, you know how that goes over. No, <laughs> no not really. But it, th- that helps balance. It helps balance. All right. Are we just airing everything out or is it helping anybody? Uh-huh. Are you just having fun? <laughs> You're taking notes. Ricky's taking notes. <laughs> All right. Number nine, and we only have 10, so we're getting there. It is okay to apologize first. And we can all say, oh, yes, amen. That's so wonderful. But get mad and be mad. And then think about it's okay to apologize first when you're like, he I am ticked at him, and he, I know he is wrong. I'm completely right, and he needs to apologize, and he's so wrong. So forget it. Go. <laughs> okay. Ever been there? All right. So, but then I let the Holy Ghost come up on the inside of me, and I remember that I'm a Christian, and I love this man. <laughs> and then I have to go repent because I was probably the one at fault anyways. You know, the things I preach here about being quick to repent, apologize, it doesn't matter. I actually, if it's to Angel, to my kids, to my staff or whatever, if I'm not right, if something's not right, I get it right. It doesn't make you weak. It keeps you meek. And a lot of people can't decipher between that. Uh, just because we're the adult, the adult, we're not always right. I never, ever, 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 I saw some of that growing up, but I never, ever wanted to live a life, you do as I say, not as I do. That will bring more confusion in a, in a family than about anything. And, uh, and you have to have a standard. If you don't have a standard and a rule, then, uh, then it doesn't work anyway. So that's, you have to make sure that's there. All right? Uh, so anything you need to apologize for while we're here? I'm sure not. All right, I'm sure. <laughs> My heart's pretty free, pretty free itself. Yeah. All right. And uh, we have and, one more. And number 10. Oh, this has got to be on everybody's list. Sure does. I know it's on Tim and Kathy's list. 
eat ice cream together. <laughs> and we're just having a bad day. Let's just go get, let's just go get some ice cream. It just seems to make everything right. Or if know? we're having a good day. You know, let's just go get ice cream. <laughs> So let, let me read a verse here. We need to read Bible. We've quoted some. Let me read a verse here because these become very dear to me. It wasn't long ago that I read these. And that, that is Psalm 112. Blessed is a man or woman, or I'm just going to say our household. Blessed is a man who fears. And I said that word fear is just not only honor and reverence, but it denotes worship. It denotes worship. And so blessed is a man that fears, honors, worships the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments, in his word. His descendants will be mighty on the earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed, empowered. Wealth and riches will be in his house. I believe this. I believe this. Will be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Unto the upright there arises light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteousness. And so this is what God does. A good man deals graciously and lends. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he will never be shaken. I can just stop there. And I just really believe that these are verses for our families. Amen. We want our family. We want our children blessed. We want our seed blessed. Now, you know, we had the three, any, many, and miny, and we decided to be no mo. <laughs> Some people just don't, they just keep, have several. But grandkids, grandkids, oh, we love our grands, just like, just like you all. And uh, we're going to have more. And, uh, you know, as kids go and get married, uh, they have more. And so we're, uh, we just want this to be done all the way through. We want to leave an inheritance, but not just greenbacks. We want to leave an inheritance to our children, our children's children. And that is our faith in God, our legacy. And this is something that we talk about. This is something that we believe. And that's what we want to leave as an inheritance. Amen? All right, well, Praise the Lord. pretty good 10, isn't it? Hey, All right. that was at least 10. We can do 10 more another time, right? So, All right. But um, obviously, like you said, there's always so much more to learn in life, but we will just endeavor to continue to walk this life together and let God lead us. Amen. Amen. Just something a little different, uh, just to kind of help people out. Uh, You know, just because we're the pastor family here doesn't mean we don't have real challenges. You know, teenagers are teenagers, if you're in a pastor's home or not. Come on, kids are kids. Colic is colic if they, when they're young. It doesn't matter. The title does not exempt you from life and problems. Amen. You just learn to fight through it and determine that we're not just going to just, just preach, preach, preach and not learn how to live it, live it, live it. And so that's what we want to do and, and be there. So I thank God for Angel. I've told her that she was part of God's redemption for my life. And uh, I... I believe it. I said marriage can do one of two things. It can, it can help you experience heaven, you know, in a way that you never experienced. Or it could cause you to experience hell in a way that you've never experienced hell. And so I kind of like heaven a whole lot better. I like heaven a whole lot better. Amen. All right. Well, let's stand together.